uh, to our session. We're really uh, pleased to, uh, to share this resource with you today. Uh, that's been a joint effort between Florida Literacy Coalition and Crowded Learning. Uh, we think it's a pretty cool tool, uh, although you all be the judge of that. And um, I just wanted to start out by sharing that it is completely free. Uh, there are no hidden fees in this. This is uh, brought to you completely as a, a public service by our two organizations. Uh, so this, this session actually is um, going to be made available, or it is. Uh, here's the bit.ly uh, URL that you can use to uh, download this presentation. Uh, it's, it's being recorded so that it can be shared um, by you or others if anybody wants to access it at a later date. Taking a look at the agenda, um, we're going to talk a little bit about the uh, history of the project, just to sort of give you a sense of um, how it's matured over time, and share with you a little bit about our two respective organizations. But we're going to spend most of the time uh, talking about um, the app, and we're going to be doing a walkthrough, and then uh, we'll have some questions at the end. Now, in our session yesterday, <clears throat> we were able to wrap up the presentation piece uh, as planned uh, within the half hour time frame. And we had quite a few questions at the end, so just wanted to give you a heads up. That could be the case today too, and we want to be uh, sensitive to your time. So if indeed you need to leave, we certainly understand. And as I said, it is uh, recorded and available. Uh, but if you want to stick around, um, you know, as we're kind of walking through some of the questions in terms of uh, connecting to the app and um, some, some of the features as well, uh, then uh, we'd love to have you stay with us. So just a little word of to the wise there that um, the entire session may go a little longer than the half hour. I'm going to go ahead and stop the video here so you can see the full screen. <laughs> so the Florida Literacy Coalition uh, is a nonprofit organization operating here in Florida. Uh, we support adult education, literacy, family literacy, and ESOL programs. Uh, we are the the State Adult and Family Literacy Resource Center, and as such, we offer a range of services, mostly focused on offering professional development. We have some grants that we make available um, and do a lot of resource sharing, <clears throat> and, and this fits into the resource sharing piece. Uh, we're committed to uh, finding and sharing good quality um, and hopefully free resources and in occasionally developing content as well, and this one sort of falls a little bit into to two camps because we're drawing very heavily on, on Khan Academy um, for this. And so the origins of this go back about eight years for uh, the Florida Literacy Coalition um, as Khan Academy was really starting to kind of coming to its own, uh, being nationally known, had a lot of good videos. And then for those of you who are familiar with the, the origins of Khan Academy, they really started with math videos. So this was a great fit for that. And they had hundreds of math videos at the time, even more now. Um, and uh, it was a fantastic resource for adult learners, but uh, there was some frustration we heard um, that uh, folks who were studying for the GED really weren't quite sure what were the best videos to use uh, in their efforts. So what we did through the help of a, an AmeriCorps VISTA member we had at the time as we developed a playlist on YouTube uh, where we correlated the math content in Khan Academy with the content requirements for um, subject requirements for the GED. And so we, we mounted that and kind of set it aside, didn't think about it too much. Fast forward a few years and, it, and we had about 60,000 visits to our playlist. And you know that's a whole lot for us, certainly the most we had on any video or playlist. And so we thought, hey, we're kind of touched on something here. Uh, because of that, we had good placement in terms of when people search for Khan Academy and GED. So we, we thought it would be appropriate to kind of do something more and do something better. And that's when uh, we reached out to Rebecca de Jesus, who you'll be hearing from here shortly. Uh, Rebecca's um, a math teacher. Uh, she teaches a number of subjects, but at the time she was teaching math uh, for the Orange County Public Schools and I mean their adult ed program there and had presented at our conference, we have a state conference, uh, several times um, on sort of 
using technology in the classroom and, and digital learning and things of that nature. So, um, so she was really the great person to, to work with on this. She developed uh, our tool, which is still available on our website. Um, and you see the URL there, basically to source those videos and make them even easier to find. And then we added some elements to it, a tracking sheet um, and um, also some quizzes and so forth. So we won't have time to do a deep dive into that site, but just wanted to, to, to make you aware of it. And I think um, Rebecca is going to touch on it a little bit later on, but our focus for today is sort of the next incarnation of this uh, as Jeff and I were kind of looking at ways we might be able to partner together. He approached us um, on this project. It was a great idea. Uh, to really take what we've done, we did on the web, and um, and make an app. And we all know a lot of adult learners <clears throat> uh, pretty much exclusively access the web through their smartphones or or devices, and so we wanted to uh, make a mobile-friendly version of this. And um, Jeff was aware of this um, development software called Glide, which we'll be talking about a little bit later um, that was a great tool for us to do this so we were we've been thrilled to partner with <clears throat> with the crowded learning on this we're, we're both uh, very committed to making uh, resources available uh, free resources in particular available to adult educators so with that I'll turn it back over to Jeff great Thank you, Greg. Um, and so, yeah, we when we approached um, Greg earlier this year and, and team at Florida Literacy Coalition, we actually had been made aware of the um, the website that he referred to earlier a couple of years ago, actually by David Rosen, who is on this call. Thank you, David, um, who knew uh, about crowded learning and knew that our goal is to increase the use of OER and make folks more aware of the great resources that are out there. So many people were probably aware of Khan Academy at that point in time, but they probably were not aware that lo and behold, in the state of Florida, um, the Florida Literacy Coalition had gone about and done this work to organize these videos in a way that makes sense for folks who are prepping for the GED. Um, and so that's one of the ways in which crowded learning sort of works to achieve our mission is by expanding awareness of some of the great tools that are out there, out there either ones that you know, we know are highly used in helping folks understand how to use those or ones such as what Florida developed here um, that are even more useful because it's, it's, ha it's been contextualized by folks who are adult educators to make sure that these resources are more usable for our learners. Um, and so we also sort of work to achieve that mission by promoting effective resources and strategies. So once again, um, organizing things based on the way that learners you know, need to study and based on making the skills that they need um, more prevalent to them uh, increases the likelihood that learners and instructors will use these resources. So we focus on things like standards alignment and or test alignment of resources so that uh, teachers and learners know what resources are going to be most relevant to them. And we also focus on experimenting and sharing. And so um, part of that is on the actual delivery of resources and how do we present free learning resources to students in ways that are meaningful and allow them to um, work on things on their own. So knowing, as Greg had pointed out, that they had developed this website focused on the GED because learners did not know which lessons to go to in Khan Academy based on their goals of passing the GED, um, this made sense as a, as a partnership um, in terms of working together. And you know, one of the things that we've discovered as an organization, Crowded Learning, um, through surveys, through conferences, and polling people, Khan Academy is the most widely open education resource used by adult education, bar none. Um, when we ask what are you using, that is always the most cited. However, as Greg also noted, um, one of the critiques is, you know, that that is designed in a way that a learner, especially an adult learner, doesn't know specifically where to go within the massive volume of content that they offer um, to work on the skills that they specifically need. So focusing on that notion of um, delivery and making it even more user friendly, obviously, as Greg noted, um, moving it to an app format allows us to get this content into the hands of more learners 
um, more easily because of the fact that uh, adult learners tend to be more uh, mobile dependent for internet access than computers. Uh, because it's an app, as um, Rebecca is going to share in a moment, this increases your ability to share this with students. You can text the link to students and they can immediately add it to their phone. There's even in the menu for the app the ability for them to share the app with other students or friends or whomever. And so this allows for more people to access this more, access this, excuse me, more readily and more easily. Um, I believe that because it's in an app format, we've, we've taken an, a great um, starting ground with the website and simplified the usability. More of our learners are used to navigating with an app-based format. Um, and I think because we've put it into this uh, tool uh, using Glide, it's a really simple interface for folks to navigate. Um, and then we've been able to add some benefits because it's an app. So within the app, learners have the ability to track their learning, to track which videos that they have completed. And we've also gone ahead and added the links to the Khan Academy versions of the videos. So the original website that was developed, they used the YouTube links uh, of the Khan Academy videos to build out that website. The app has those in app. So if you look on the left, this is the video that a student is going to see when they go and navigate to the video that they want to watch. But if you scroll down on the screen, there's a link that allows them to launch the very same video in Khan Academy. And we, we wanted to do that because we know that, in, especially right now, where teachers are struggling to get both content into learners' hands, but also to track learner um, time spent in learning, that if a learner has a Khan Academy account, uh, a Khan Academy has the capability of tracking the learner's time. And so Rebecca will walk through that in a second, and I'm actually now going to hand it over to Rebecca. Okay, thank you. Uh, so Jeff, uh, just to let you know, I'm, I'm not able to share my screen at this moment. So I'm a teacher from Orange County, like Greg said, and I've typically taught math in ABE and GED programs. So I am happy to be part of this project just because I'm always looking for free resources for my students. And we all know as teachers that we've had that experience where students are, they don't have computers at home. So even if we find great websites, they really can't use them. So today I am going to be walking you through the app and the very simple uses for the app and hopefully you will be able to um sorry i need to pay attention to which screen i'm sharing here we go um uh, we'll be i'll be walking you through the app and just some simple uses for the app so this application it can some i'm sorry can somebody confirm that you're seeing my screen because i'm not we can see your screen Okay, okay, thank you. Um, so the, the app is actually not a, an application, it's actually a website. So part of that, uh, part of using it, maybe adding it to your home screen. So I'm gonna just sh quickly show you how to do that. And then I will walk you through the different parts of the app. So it's actually a website, we're not gonna get bogged down with that. I'm just gonna show you how to add it. Okay, so basically on the iPhone, and I'm going to show you this live in just a moment. On the iPhone, when you open this application in a web browser, you are going to see Add to Home Screen by using this little button that has a box and an arrow. And um, on the iPads and iPhone Xs, you'll see it in the top right hand corner. On some iPhones, you're going to see it in the bottom. You will need to use Safari to do this. If you have downloaded Google Chrome or anything onto your iProduct, it is not going to give you that add to home screen option. So for students and for yourself, you're going to want to go ahead and just use Safari just for this process. Then you can switch over to any other uh, application that you want. Uh, on Android devices, you're going to see a very similar thing. At the bottom of the screen, when you, when you visit the website, you are going to see the add video to home screen. So I'm going to demonstrate this live. And if you would like to follow along, you can simply open on any internet website on your phone, except for if your iPhone, make sure it's Safari, this website, gedmath.glideapp.io. And I'm going to demonstrate this right now for you. So I'm going to start with an iProduct. This is this iPhone X. 
And what you basically just need to do is you need to open Safari and you're going to just visit that exact website, gedmath.glideapp.io. And once you do that, you are going to see the little uh, sign that says, click this button down here at the bottom. And sometimes you may see it in the top right, this little add to home screen button. And then you can scroll down and you will see add to home screen. So once you click that, if you want to, you can change the name of it, shorten it, uh, your choice, and then simply click add. And once you have done that, if you go back to the home screen, you will see that that app is there and available on the home screen and you can open it like an application. Okay, so it's going to be a very similar process and I'm just simply going to pick an Android device and I'm gonna show you the same thing on an Android. It, this is pretty simple. I don't think it's gonna to be too much trouble to set students up with this or communicate with this with students. On an Android device, probably you're gonna find Google as a uh, web browser. So again, GED Math. And if you email your students uh, this, this um, website gedmath.glideapp.io they can just click on it from the from the email they don't need to retype it so that will make it even easier for your students and once again once you visit this on an android device at the bottom of the phone screen you will see add and you will have to click add and then add automatically for some reason the androids are doing it twice and then once you go back to the home screen you will see that that app will just populate on the home screen. So then it functions just as a normal app. So walking you through, through the actual application, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to show you what the student experience will be. They will need to enter an email. We did verify that this email is not going to be used uh, by the Glide app location so they don't have to really worry about this they can enter any email and once they do that they will need to retrieve a pin from their email so this is going to be a second step for students but it's really not that difficult just make sure that they enter an email that they actually can check so that they can get this pin and I'm going to sorry uh, the pin is taking a second to generate so, okay, I'm going to just enter the pin for today. And every student is going to have a unique pin and that pin is going to change every time a student logs in, but if they stay logged in on their phone, then they will not need to do that over and over. It should hold it like any other application on your phone. So I'm just going to direct your attention to the different buttons of the app. On the welcome screen, you're going to find some basic information. You're also going to find a video overview here that students can watch, which is going to be very similar to the information that I'm presenting to you today. So if you forget anything or you would like to just show this video to your students, it basically walks through the application. And we we also have a short video here that explains how to add this app to your phone. So one of the main things that we discovered yesterday is just on the iPhones, you really do need to use Safari or else the directions will not work correctly. Uh, in the top left hand corner, you see those three little lines and that's just a place where a student may be able to sign out or you could share the app with a student if you wanted to that way. Students probably won't need that too much. At the bottom of the application, you're going to see four different buttons and these are pretty simple and easy to use and that's one of my favorite parts of this is that there's not too much for a low tech student to click on. You only have to teach them a couple things. So the predominant area that I think a student might use is the browse section. And if you look at the browse section, you will see the five content areas and we have aligned these areas to the GED prescriptions. So if you have any students taking GED practice tests, they are going to see the names of these content areas on their score reports. But if you are in a task or a high set state, you're still going to find use from this because math is math and I will show you how the content areas break down in just a moment. Uh, while I'm here, I'm just gonna say that if you do want to use this online, instead of viewing this 
application on a web browser, like on, on a computer, uh, you will see the same thing. This is the original website that Greg mentioned, and you will see the same content areas there. So the app and the website are basically the same thing. And we're just very happy to be presenting this app because we know so many students only have phones. So within each of these browse sections, you're going to see a listing of subsections. So I'm just going to show you the foundation subsections. And you'll see that there are varying numbers of subsections for each uh, content area. And in each section, you will also find a topic quiz, which will open up as a Google form. And I'm just going to briefly open this one for you to show you. Uh, you just have to click a couple of times and it will launch. This is a quiz. That, these quizzes are anywhere from 10 to 20 questions. And um, well, actually, this one's shorter. It's five questions. So they're anywhere from five to 20 questions. And the students will get immediate feedback about whether or not they got the questions right or wrong. And they will be given the answer. So this is a, something that a student can repeat, and that is the quiz feature that you will find. Now, since I'm in this quiz, I'm going to mention this very important back button at the top left, because the students will be using this back button quite frequently to back out of wherever they have clicked through, whether it be a video or the quiz. So I'm back into the subsections here and I'm gonna back out to the main content areas and just make a comment that the foundation section is really building blocks. This is the very basic section. The basic math section is probably where I would say we're going to start with GED content. And this section would represent those first five questions on the GED that are no calculator sections. And if you are tasked in high set and you have those no calculator computational skills on your exams, you're going to find that here in the basic math section. So you'll see the decimals, fractions, and percents, which of course we know are those big computational areas. And in the basic algebra and graphs and function sections, you're going to find what I would call the meat and potatoes of the GED exam, if those are you, those are you in GED states. The basic algebra section, of course, is going to be the largest section and the longest quiz because it's such a huge predominant part of the test. And we all know that expressions and equations are throughout the entire exam and so this is a really important question a section so if i if i am telling a student who is short on time to begin anywhere i am telling them to begin with basic algebra and graphs and functions because graphs and functions is going to include slope and we know that a lot of students come back from the test complaining about the numerous slope questions that they saw and they didn't know how to do them uh, we also have mean median mode and range there um, so we've got uh, a lot of important sections down here at the bottom, the algebra, graphs, and functions, and geometry. I will also make note to you that these subsections are um, good for anybody learning adult education math, right? It doesn't matter if it's task or high set, you can direct your students based upon the names of the subsections. So, um, when you when you click on any of the subsections, for example, probability, you will then see the listing of the videos and you can click on one of the videos and you are going to see that you can play the video right from the application. So this is something that a student can just watch and participate with the practice questions within the video. However, as Jeff mentioned, there is also an open in Khan Academy section where if you are already working with a student who is working with Khan Academy, which is also a free resource for anybody, um, then they can open in Khan Academy and also see additional practice questions. So that may be something that you are looking for as a teacher and as a teacher Khan Academy also gives you the time tracking. This app does not track time. However, what it does track is whether or not a student has completed the video and that is a student powered tracking system. So I'm going to back out to that subsection. You'll see all these little check boxes. If I want to say that I've completed a video, I can simply 
check it off. I don't need to uh, even watch the video. So this is not necessarily, from a teacher perspective, the best way to track a student because they can just check these boxes. However, it is really great for the user because once I know that I have watched this video, I can mark it as complete. And if I want to enter a date and time that I completed it, and then I can really track what I have watched and what I haven't. There are about, there are over 200 videos in this application, so it can get overwhelming if they're trying to remember what they have already finished. They also have the option to click here and add a note, and the notes that they add will only be viewable by them. So that's really just for their use only. So uh, backing out, again, you can see as I click in these different sections, some of these videos will not be checked off because I have not finished them. You are only going to see the check marks under the videos that I've already completed. And that is something that I can use as an independent user if I'm a student and I just want to uh, keep track of what I have, I have completed. So that's a really awesome feature of this application. So you'll notice that I keep using this back button. That's going to be kind of important because, because you're moving forward and backward within the application by using that back button. So that is the, the basics of the browse section. In the search section, you can search by word or content. So I'm just going to type slope because we know that's a big, huge one on the GED. And then you'll see as soon as I type that, it will populate a list of videos that coordinate, uh, that correspond to slope or whatever word you type here. So that's another way that students may browse through the content. And in this completed section, you are going to see all the videos that have been checked off or marked as complete. So as a teacher, if you wanted to train your students to enter dates and times and check the videos off as they have watched them, you could have your students show you this section to show you that they have completed certain videos and or maybe from, for homework. But of course, there is actually no, uh, it would be an honor system tracking. However, you, you have the option of doing some real tracking in Khan Academy. So those are the basics of the app. We find it uh, pretty easy to navigate just with these four buttons at the bottom. I think uh, the browse section might be the most popular section to use. And again, you have the quizzing at the bottom of every, um, every section, every large section you will find the quiz. And one of the benefits of the quiz is to uh, have the GED experience when it comes to testing. So you may find a probability worksheet online that is just testing a student on probability, but those of us that have studied the GED test know that the way that the GED shows questions is at a very advanced level because many skills are layered together and most of the questions are word problems and the questions are simply harder than some of the worksheets that you might find online. So we have that, that experience where students are coming back and saying, well, nothing you taught me was on there. And you know that you did teach them the skills that were on there. But the point of these quizzes is really to give the student a, the GED style experience. So the style of GED questioning, those students that we have that are 30 years old or older did not necessarily grow up in the current K-12 system with the current type of testing. So they're having to adapt to that those multi-layered questions. So that's one of the main points of the quizzes. And with that, I am finished. So I'm gonna pass it back over to Greg. I'm sorry, to Jeff. That's okay. Hey, uh, great. Uh, wow, I finished at 1030. Um, I'm sure there are some questions. I see a couple in the Q&A and there actually haven't been that many in the chat, so great job. But I do have a content question for you. And Rebecca, I think you're the person to ask this. It's, a, it's the last thing in the chat right now um, regarding probability being added to the algebra section rather than a separate section. So a large portion of the, a large part of the reason that we, we organize things the way that they are is because in the, on the GED math practice test, students get certain uh, prescriptions based upon their practice test results. 
and if you don't have experience with that, it's hard for me to describe it to you, but basically students take a practice test and then they're able to see a score report. Based upon that score report, we have tried to file these things into certain content areas. So, okay, good. So based upon the GED Ready, certain things are, are getting filed in certain ways. So we try to mimic that just so that the students can kind of use those prescriptions to describe that, to prescribe their use of this app. Uh, yesterday, a teacher brought up a good idea, which is to have the student take the quiz first and then see if they need to review this section. I would guess that most students do need the basic algebra and graphs and function sections. A lot of them might be able to live without the foundations and basic math. Awesome. Um, so there's a couple of questions in the q and I'll, I can take the screen. Um, do. So uh, first one is from David uh, Rosen. Um, to complete these lessons, is writing required or are all quiz questions multiple choice? If so, do you recommend using a portable key Bluetooth keyboard with the app? So within the app itself, David, um, there, excuse me, actually. So within the app, there are quizzes and those are the ones that Rebecca developed. And of course, my little Zoom panel is in the way. Um, so as Rebecca mentioned with each topic, there are uh, these quizzes at the end. Um, and uh, just so for folks to understand, I'm, we are looking at this app on a computer right now. So uh, I'm gonna launch this and it's going to open a new tab in my browser on my computer. They would be viewing this obviously on their phone. Um, some of the questions are open response uh, within the Google quiz, the Google Forms quiz, and some of them are multiple choice. Uh, whether or not they want to use a, a keyboard with the app to answer those, that's completely up to them. I, I feel like a lot of students are very adept at typing um, on their phone. Um, but I mean, if, if they have a Bluetooth keyboard, they're good. But it's not extensive writing, as you can see here. This is simply. Um, like writing the number to the, the nearest thousand. Uh, if they're launching into Khan Academy, um, then you know Khan Academy has its own quizzes, which is also just something to mention that you know they, they can get more videos and more practice in Khan Academy um, if they wish. This really is a sort of a tool that can be used as is, as a study tool, um, but it's also really serving as a map, as we were saying earlier for um, figuring out where you should be going in Khan Academy. And it may be that that, that is how students are using it, but um, you don't need an account in Khan Academy uh, in order to complete those practice uh, quizzes that are in Khan Academy or to even view the videos in Khan Academy. Um, but those questions do have some open-ended responses as well. They also have additional sort of um, questions. I, I know of some where you're, you're manipulating uh, lines to um, demonstrate that you know the difference between parallel and perpendicular lines. Um, and they are all mobile friendly, which is, is really great. Um, we have another question about uh, whether instructors need to create a Khan Academy class in Khan Academy and have students join their class in order for their time to be tracked. So this is really your decision as an instructor. Um, as Rebecca mentioned, all of the tracking that's happening in the app is, uh, is for students. Uh, this web, the original website was really developed as a uh, self-study tool for students who wanted to practice and, and, and have more prep opportunity for the GED math uh, test. And we've, we've sort of carried that over into the app. So all of the tracking that you see within the app is really designed, um, and I haven't actually selected anything in here, but it's designed for students to just be able to know what they've looked at and what they haven't. If you want that time tracking, then uh, yes, you can have the student create a Khan Academy account. They don't need to. Um, they don't need to be in a class in order to do that. Anyone can create their own Khan Academy account. Uh, if you want to see their results, then yes, you would need to set up a class account and and bring those student accounts into your Khan Academy class. And there's a pretty easy way to do that. It just involves a code for your class and then the student can enroll. Um, but just to, to um, note on that, um, in terms of if students are using Khan Academy, the way this works is when a student goes to a specific video, and just to go back again, 
um, you know, this would be, this is the topic, these are sort of the subtopics, and then these are the skills within. Um, I can watch the video in app, or I can scroll down and this would launch in Khan Academy. Now again, we're looking at this on a computer. And so I'm launching into another tab in my browser. However, this is launching into, as you can see up here, this is my account. So this is my Khan Academy account that has launched. Um, and the same thing is going to happen on a phone. So if you do want them to be tracking time, you'll probably want them to download the Khan Academy app as well and log in um, so that the, their phone knows it's their account on Khan Academy. And then what's gonna happen for that student is when they click on open in Khan Academy, it's going to launch their app and it's going to launch into their account on their app so that it is tracking their time within Khan Academy, if that makes sense. Um, so the time tracking thing is something that we, we know is really important um, to instructors, especially now. And so we wanted to make this as seamless as possible um, in order for students to be able to do that. But again, if you let students loose on Khan Academy, it's a function of where do I go? Um, in order to study X thing on the GED. And so that's why the way that it's been organized in the app is really helpful for students. Um, I see a hand raised, and let me see if there's other questions here. Uh, yes, these slides will be available um, after the webinar, as well as the recording of the video and a couple other things that we will share out. Um, do, do I'm trying to see, are there any other questions? Actually, I need to see who raised their hands to do, and I can't. <laughs> Sorry, participants. Uh, Krista Barnes. Um, Krista, did you want to type in a question or do you want to uh, talk? Here, I'll allow you to talk. Krista? You have talking permitted. I was actually the one asking about the Khan Academy and um, tracking the time, so you answered it. I'm sorry, I lowered my hand now. Oh, no worries. Perfect. All right, are there any other questions? Great. Um, this is. This is easy. So are there any questions since you are here um, and we are together and we have time? Um, are there, I saw someone had a question regarding a specific phone type, um, iPhone XR. So just so you know what Rebecca was using here, this is a, um, a phone emulator called Appetize, appetize.io. Um, we're just using the demo, but you can actually create a free account and I think it allows you up to like a hundred minutes of demoing um, using it, which as you know, as you're trying to teach folks how to use new apps and you have to do that virtually, um, it's kind of a nice tool to be able to demonstrate for folks, you know, how to, how to actually operate the app. And so this is what is called an emulator. Now on the demo, we are, we are restricted to uh, just one minute um, at a time, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, I don't even know, is it an XS phone that we're, we're trying to do here? Um, well, I'm going to just, I'm going to, I'm going to do it on this just so you can see. So on a, on an iPhone 10, um, obviously you swipe up in order to get to your home screen. And again, you're going to open Safari. Now, as Rebecca shared earlier, um, there's a number of ways that you can share these. Uh, we're actually going to, in the presentation, there's a QR code that you could use and students could literally, if you're in Zoom, they could scan the QR code on, on their screen and do that. But you can also simply just text um, the URL to students. Um, and if you do that as a text or even in Remind or, or anything that you use, that's automatically gonna be hyperlinked. And so when they click on it, it's going to launch, um, this is what they're going to see. And so on, as, as Rebecca showed earlier, at the bottom of Safari on any iPhone, there is this um, arrow, which allows you to do a number of things related to um, the, the web page that you have up, including adding to home screen. So what you're really doing is bookmarking the page. Sorry, I used my minute, so I have to redo that. Um, what you're doing, because this is a browser-based app, 
is you are essentially bookmarking the app to your phone. Um, and in doing so, you, could, you can do this same process with any website, um, which I do for a lot of things that I know I'm using a lot. Didn't mean to do that. Um, sorry, add to home screen, add. Um, so with any website, you actually can do this. And then there's going to be some type of icon here. But because this is an app, um, the way it, what's happening now when I click on it is actually it's launching the app in a browser, but it, it, it actually appears as an app. You see there's no browser bar. There's no anything. It is, it is now operating as an app, but it is a browser-based app. And so that's why that step is needed. One other thing to note, and I did share this with folks um, yesterday as well, is the cool thing about uh, Glide, which is the tool that we have built this with, is you can actually add this to desktop computers as well. So if you can see my screen still, um, this I've added as a desktop app um, to my computer as well. And because I've logged in on this computer, it's going to log me into my account. You can see that on my account, I do have some completed activities, um, but basically this can be loaded onto computers as, as well. Um, it is designed to be actually mobile first. So it's kind of the, the flip of what we often see, right? We, we know that there's great tools that are designed for computers and then they don't really work so well on a mobile device. This is kind of the reverse. It's designed for mobile devices, but it's certainly perfectly operable on a computer. Same kind of navigation, um, but you actually have this kind of nice little um, panel over here that allows you to click through the different topics and see the different subtopics. And then again, it looks exactly as it would on a device. I can play the video. Um, I can maximize this into full screen um, on my computer and then you know, they'll be looking at the video in full screen. Uh, in this case, if you wanted to do this, say these were desktop computers at your center um, down the road when we were back together in classes, students would need to log into their account. And as Rebecca noted, um, the process for doing that is just entering their email um, and when they do so, they get a code that is sent to their email and they just enter that code and that's how they log in. But it would track their same account on their computer, on their phone, any device that they want to use in order to operate it. So I see some things in the chat. Um, do, do, do. Doesn't look like there's any more questions. So um, okay. I think with that, we will... Uh, I just want to make one last comment. Though anybody having issues with an iPhone, we did discover the iPhone X and probably XR and XS will not have the add to home screen if you are not using Safari. It has to be Safari. It can't be Google. And just to add to that, um, it really doesn't matter after that. Like they're not, not really in Chrome or in Safari. They're in the app once they're using it um, uh, on their phone, once they've added it to their home screen. Well, I just wanted to thank uh, Jeff and Rebecca. Uh, wonderful job today. I, we really do hope that this will be a useful tool for you all. Um, this this um, authoring tool that we used, Glide, um, this has been sort of a little bit of a pilot project in using it. Um, but if you're interested in that, I would highly recommend and you're, you'd like to have a partner in the, in the development process, um, reach out to Jeff and Crowded Learning. Um, you know, it's, it's actually, we didn't get into any detail on it, but it's, it's meant to be a tool that lay people can use. Um, you know, you don't have to be a professional coder in order to do it. Now, as we've kind of gone into a lot of detail here in terms of how to download it, it's not available on the App Store. Uh, so your students may be inclined because that's how they go and find apps, you know, and it, it is an app, you know, it has the look, feel and functionality of app. It just operates a little bit differently. So that may be, you know, one thing that you'd really want to spend some time on. And we provided some video um, instruction to do that as well. That largely emulates what we've shared here today. So um, we do hope it's going to be a useful tool for you. We'd love to hear how it goes if you do use it. Um, we'd love to hear um, whether it's um, 
it's working for you. One of the nice things about Glide is it's highly flexible in terms of making changes. Uh, we kind of worked on a number of occasions with Jeff while he was making real-time changes on the app as we spoke in a video conferencing call. So um, it's, it really is kind of a neat, neat tool to use. And we hope, I mean, a Glide is, but we do hope that you'll get, you'll get a lot of good use and your students will get a lot of good use out of this, um, this app. So uh, thank you. Jeff and Rebecca, I appreciate it. And I'll turn it back over to you, Jeff, if you have any hardened words. I don't, uh, thanks, Greg, this, uh, and Rebecca and Isa as well. This has been really uh, great to develop. As Greg said, it's, it's really simple to be developing these apps. Um, I, I poked on the spreadsheet, like this literally was created just using a spreadsheet with, um, just sort of you have to organize it in a certain way and suddenly you you have an app that you can share with students and we know that um, teachers have been for the past couple months really um, diligently working to find resources and um, organize them for students in ways that allow them to be able to continue learning in this current situation and so anything we can do to help um, and support that through tools like this. We are definitely looking for folks um, to work with who are doing similar great work to what Florida did in building the GED video library. So um, with that, uh, enjoy your ap afternoon at this point. And, uh, and um, again, look for the follow-up and we'll be happy to answer any questions down the road for you. Thank you.